Hey everybody, and welcome to the video on assembling the shutter mechanism for the Reseski TLR. If you're following along in your instruction manual, we're picking up here at step three. Steps one and two were to assemble the two side panels, and those steps were completed in the previous video. So check that out. I'll put a, if I don't remember to put a link in the description, call me a doofus and remind me to put a link down there, and I will. But um, there should be a link in the description that if you need to still put your sides together, you can find it. So here's the, this is the front panel. Mine's yellow, yours could be white or green or black or any of a number of other colors. Um, they st start out black and then apparently paint them. So that's the shut panel. It's upside down as the instruction shows. Here is the shutter, uh, part of the shutter and aperture mechanism. So this piece, it looks like a plate with wings and there's a little raised ridge down here where my thumb is at. You can see that they're catching the light differently. That goes at between 4 and 5 o'clock because that's part of the shutter assembly and that's what's going to keep the shutter blade from advancing too far. And so the types of screws this takes, it just takes the standard screws and we're going to put these in here like this. The screwdriver that I lost was magnetic. It's really pretty great. And this is not magnetic. It's a little bit trickier to use. I'll do my best not to curse up a storm as this driver repeatedly drops screws. Hopefully it doesn't drop any of them in the garbage disposal in the sink next to me. That would probably be a catastrophe. Okay, so this is the first part of the shutter assembly. It, which is done. Now we need the shutter blade itself and spring B. The shutter blade is up here. It looks like this. It looks basically like a clown tie with a hole at the top and then a hook in it. A small little hook right there. And the assembly goes like this. So you can see it's got some depth to it. So that little part protruding out will actually go facing the front of the camera that way. And then the hook is aligned to grip that way. We're going to need spring B. Spring B is the very, very tiny spring. This is about the hardest part of the assembly up for this step. We also need a flanged screw. So I'm going to screw this in first. The, the shutter gets screwed into, so there are a couple of holes up here. Try that again. A couple of holes up here. There's one on the left and one on the right. There's a grouping of two right above this plastic plate. The shutter blade gets screwed into the one on the left. So I'm going to put the screw into the shutter blade. Again, the hook goes like this. You don't want to over tighten it because if you over tighten it, then it won't be able to shut and open properly. Okay. And you also don't want it to be too loose because then it will be faster than it's designed to be. So you want to have it nice and medium. So a little bit of resistance is a little bit too much. Okay, so what I did with the last one I'm going to do with this one is if I can hold it and it doesn't slide shut, it's fine, but it should give me no problems opening and shutting. It shouldn't feel like it's rubbing up against anything. Now spring B. Spring B is going to go from the hook on the assembly arm, on the shutter arm rather, to this little peg right here. And this is absolutely the hardest part of the build for me because I have huge fingers. And that explains why it went on perfectly the first time without any trouble. It literally took me 40 minutes to do that last time. Well, anyway, that went better. So we've got this, we've got, we're this far with the shutter blade in, in place. For the rest of this build, we're going to need springs C. Spring C is the smaller one with the slightly more delicate wire. Spring D, which is the larger one with the slightly thicker wire. Two flange screws. This piece right here, which looks like a mushroom with an arm on it. This lever here, this curved lever, this is the shutter release. It goes on the front of the camera. 
And this little piece that we're going to use next, which has this weird little shape to it. And we're going to need the camera obscura for the last step and a couple more screws, but we'll get to that later in this segment. So I'm a complete doofus. I just recorded how to rebuild the shutter because I put it together wrong. And I uh, didn't hit the record button all the way, so it didn't take any of the video. So um, when I put the shutter together the first way, it wasn't working correctly. This part of the shutter was, this part was not. So the way that we have to do this is, I can't believe I have to put this together for a third time. Okay, so the spring C goes on this piece with the two funky arms and the hook on spring C connects to the small arm. It hooks this way. And then we're gonna put, and then the arm for spring C is up here. We're gonna put it there so that the arm is resting up against the bottom of that support. I'm gonna turn this assembly 270 degrees hold it in place with my thumb, 270 degrees counterclockwise. And screw it in all the way, even though it says not to, and then reverse it it's about a far. millimeter. A millimeter gap between the bottom of the flange screw and the top of this plastic thing. And for those of you outside of the logical part of the world, a millimeter is 1 25th of an inch. So have fun figuring that out. Now this, this larger spring uses a similar principle where the arm is going to go this way and it's got a hook that's facing like this again. The hook goes through this part here, through this, this stand, and there's a, a gap in this stand's arm so that the hook cannot come out. So the hook hooks in like that and then the spring arm gets locked down. Oh my gosh, this is not easy. Okay, so we're going to try that again, and you won't see that last attempt. It's going to end up on the outtake floor. Uh, okay, so here we go. And that's going to go in that way. Okay, we're almost there. Now it won't go in all the way just yet. We have to tension it, so it means turning it clockwise. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to take this front arm. It goes on that way, just like that. So it should point at about that angle. We're going to take this flange screw. We don't want to tighten it all the way. Now let's see if we did this whole assembly correct. Now if this is going to work properly, at rest, this arm is sitting between the little notch on the back of the shutter and the screw that's the uh, axis for the shutter blade. Now when I push down on the shutter assembly, that's exactly what should happen. Some, some of these work like this if you put them together a certain way like I have accidentally just done where if you use the shutter just so. It sometimes gives you a secret bulb mode. But anyway, to test to see if your shutter is working correctly, put your thumb right here. And if it is, when the shutter blade opens, it'll get stuck in your thumb. The other thing you can do is put this up to your eye and activate the shutter. And if it's working, then you'll see a quick flash of light. So that's how the shutter goes together. Next thing we're going to do is put on the camera obscura. It goes on this way. And so as you can see in the directions, it's like this. The camera obscura has a little notch on one side right here. This is where the wheel for the accounting mechanism goes. So camera obscura just fits on right like that. And then it gets a handful of screws. This is a flanged screw. It goes on in the top right. What's fairly hilarious about this is 
as many problems as I'm having, this is actually going to better together than the one that came, gosh darn it, with the English instructions. That one took me almost two hours to put together. It took me an hour to get this far. There we go. That's the first one down. It's going to get another flange screw up here on the top left. You know what? I need to magnetize this screwdriver for a minute. There we go. Standard, decently strong magnet. All right, and that's in place. Now we just we're just going to use two standard screws on the so next part. Bottom of this. right, bottom left. And now, if you did all that, um, hopefully better than I did, you should have a completely functional shutter assembly. Although mine is working only in bulb mode. Well, that's interesting. I'll have one that works in bulb mode and one that's standard instant. So the next video is going to pick up with step four, and we're going to assemble the back of the camera and then the sides in the same video. So uh, if I forget to put a link to, in the, to that in the description, please remind me, and I will put a link into it, in there for it. And uh, let's move on.